And welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Daytona Everett. We are uh, going to go into this story. Gabby Petito, really dive deep into this. I'm going to bring on Dr. Sarah Stein. She is a cold case consultant and an expert on all things along these lines. Sarah, uh, I have several different questions for you, but I want to start off first uh, with what your thoughts were of this autopsy being released today by the Teton County Sheriff's Department, or uh, I'm sorry, Teton County Coroner's Office. For having me this evening, and I'd like to start by expressing my sincerest condolences to Gabby's family and all her loved ones. Um, the news of the autopsy today and the, um, the release of information that it is indeed Gabby uh, was heart-wrenching to see, certainly, but it did give us some information, at least to begin with. Uh, and of course, the most important piece of information being that the manner of death uh, for Gabby was indeed homicide. So we do have that knowledge tonight that it was a wrongful death. Yeah, I mean, we had no idea that it was gonna come out this, this early. And like you said, this initial determination is that the manner of death is homicide, but we're still waiting on the final autopsy results. So can you kind of clarify what that means for all of our viewers right now? Certainly. So there will be a few things pending this evening uh, and into the coming days and potentially even weeks ahead. Uh, one of those things will be toxicology results to determine if Gabby had any unusual substances uh, in her system at the time that she passed, that she was murdered. Uh, and the second thing, of course, being the actual cause of her death. And we don't know what to expect there. There could be any number of causes of death. However, considering the fact that the coroner was able to determine that this was a homicide, that does seem to indicate uh, that they have an idea of what might have caused her death, whether that be strangulation, in which case we would see um, breakage of the bones uh, in the hyoid in her neck, or if it was a blunt force trauma, there would certainly be evidence of that. So the fact that they were able to determine that it was a homicide is significant. Yeah, it definitely is significant development in all of this. I wanna circle back just to kind of the beginning of this case. As you know, uh, this has gotten incredible national reaction and attention, whether that be online, we just showed uh, all of these digital detectives who are trying to crack this case alongside the FBI. You know, I'm curious what your thoughts are of this reaching the, the national spotlight so quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been uh, a few media pundits who have been quick to label the interest in Gabby's disappearance and unfortunate homicide as a phenomenon known as missing white woman syndrome. And I read a piece tonight actually on Fox by one of your contributors, David Marcus, in which he referred to missing white woman syndrome as being uh, reductive and dismissive. And it simply would lump Gabby into uh, a category um, that is not favorably really looked upon. And I don't think at all that that's what galvanized this massive social media response. I have never in my career seen such an immediate response by the public and such a willingness to become involved and be singularly focused on this case and provide information to authorities. It was remarkable that within hours of Gabby's story hitting the national spotlight that there were actually people starting to descend on the laundry home demanding accountability. That's something you just don't see every day in missing persons investigations. But I think Gabby captivated so many people because she truly embodied the American spirit um, that seems to have been a little elusive in recent times. And she embraced freedom. She embraced adventure. and she made her home out of traveling across the country so like a lot of us i'm sure she was feeling a little lost but also found in her new purpose in life 
and we got to live through her eyes on social media and see all her experiences and that compels people and i think we all came together to try and bring gabby home and the digital detectives and the fbi and law enforcement did that it it was truly remarkable to see yeah it really has been i mean not to mention that the trip that she went missing on they literally had documented themselves which brings me into my next question with it being such a far-reaching investigation i mean this is months long trip how do you think that's going to play a role in this investigation for the fbi moving forward I think it could play a very significant role. The first issue at hand is, of course, we have not been able to locate Brian Laundrie to date. He is still missing. He must be located and it must be determined whether he had any involvement in Gabby's murder. Uh, and the second issue is that he covered, and Gabby as well, covered such a vast amount of terrain in their journey. They left you know, from New York and traveled across the country. And so I think it's really critical that the public remain engaged and alert and continues to review their vacation film, their photographs, um, anything that they might have remembered along the route that was unusual if they encountered Gabby or Brian. And I certainly think that their travels play a, a significant role in determining what happened to Gabby. Sure. I think the question on everyone's mind right now is, if Brian Laundrie is not found, what happens next? How long does this story uh, remain a story? Well, I think Gabby's story will remain a story mm -hmm. for as long as we continue to be present and continue to be involved and continue to demand accountability. One thing that I thought was very impressive and certainly it's a desire for this type of action to be taken in every single missing persons case and every homicide case. But Governor Ron DeSantis came out today and vowed decisive action. He vowed additional resources to contribute to finding Mr. Laundry, And I think that was a very admirable and courageous step for him to take. Do you think that's going to make a, a major difference in this investigation right now, allotting more resources? I think certainly it will be helpful. As we know, uh, law enforcement has faced a myriad of challenges uh, during the past several months, uh, and one of them is funding and personnel. And law enforcement needs all the help that they can get right now. So I do believe that that might make a difference. Doctor, I'm just curious, from, from your point of seeing so many of these cases, is there anything in particular that has stuck out to you that you have found interesting or unique for this case in particular? I think that one of the things, the biggest thing is the social involvement, the social media, how quickly got people got involved in Gabby's case. The second thing, that really sticks out to me is, I hate to say it, but the tragedy of this whole case. You know, we have, as you said, Gabby's photographs, her videos, her documenting her entire life for the world to see, which was so beautiful. But at the same time, we have this heart-wrenching video from the body cam of the Moab police officer who responded to the potential domestic violence incident between her and Mr. Laundry, And we really got a window into Gabby's spirit and into her soul and her struggles that we're not privy to uh, in other cases like this. And to see that she was in such distress prior to her death was heartbreaking but by that same token seeing that body cam footage that is nothing but exemplary policing the moab police department did everything right they separated the two of them they prevented mr laundry from leaving the scene uh, they arranged for them to spend the night apart 
and they did everything that they could, but it's it's still tragic to see that and to have a firsthand view of what she went through in the final days of her life. Yeah, you're so right. Uh, we know that that body camera footage is going to be seen several more times uh, in the future here as, as evidence. But I am curious what your thoughts are on the role that the two sets of parents are playing in this because arguably, I mean, they've been getting more screen time than anyone or a lot of people asking them questions. We've seen uh, the parents of Brian Laundrie coming out of the home for just brief moments, not speaking to media. The attorney is supposed to hold a press conference for the Brian Laundrie family. That not happening either. What does all this mean? Well, it could mean several different things and to play devil's advocate and to look at all the different scenarios, Mr. Laundrie has not yet been charged with a crime. And even if he has been charged with a crime, it is his constitutional right to decline to speak with authorities. And that's certainly within his right to make that decision. However, um, in terms of his family's activities, um, it is very disheartening to see that um, despite the fact that Gabby had shared their home with them, that they ostensibly love her, that they would not choose to take this opportunity to clear up any misunderstandings, to defend their son. Um, and certainly Mr. Laundry fleeing um, is not a good indicator behaviorally uh, of his innocence, but we certainly can't jump to that conclusion yet. And as for Gabby's courageous and phenomenal family, she has such a support network. And what I have observed during my career is that it is the families who commit themselves, uh, certainly every family commits themselves to search for their loved one uh, until they are returned home. But it's the families who really commit as hard and as gut-wrenching, I can't imagine what it would be like to be her family right now, but who commit to doing the hard things, going on camera, going on television, pleading for any bit, any piece of information that might bring their loved one home, that can make all the difference in the world. And so I, I applaud their courage. All right, Dr. Sarah Stein, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for giving us insight on this. Uh, in your expertise, what do you think the timeline is for that toxicology report to be released? Uh, it could, it depends truly on the jurisdiction, how quickly they can get those uh, labs processed and get them returned to the coroner. I would say days, even up to weeks, it's difficult mm. to know, but it, hopefully will not be too long before the actual cause of death and any additional testing will be released to the public. Okay, so two things that we're gonna be watching moving forward, the release of that toxicology report, and then also watching this search that's underway for Brian Laundrie right now. Uh, Dr. Sarah Stein, again, thank you so much for being with us on the show. We'll definitely have you back on uh, to dive deeper into all of these developing details uh, throughout the weeks here. All right, thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna take another two minute break here on Live